Thanks for tuning in to the latest weather briefing. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Quite a bit to talk about. We've had some really unusual warm temperatures and even record highs in the low 90s again. But we have big changes coming. Two closed lows. Those are coming from the Alaska region straight down over California. It'll bring showers, mountain snow, and wind. We also expect to see some hail. Uh, in the coastal and valley locations with heavier showers and even a thunderstorm. There will be some snow in the mountains, several inches over a foot in some of the higher elevations. And with that instability means snow pellets and grapple, which are the soft versions of the hail. So the heavy rain will affect travel, especially Friday morning during the commute. There also will be wind impacts through the deserts. Let's get to it. Here is some of that climate information. Very little precipitation occurred January and February. In fact, on January 1, the snowpack, snow water equivalent, went from 160% of average down to 65% of average. Quite a drop. That happens when you have warm, mild weather, but more importantly, when the storms just stop during what normally is the wettest months on record, January and February in California. Take a look at this graphic. The precipitation, January and February, so 2022, driest on record in the deep red shaded areas. That's about two thirds of California. Let me give you an example. Uh, Mammoth Mountain had seven inches of snow. Mount Laguna in San Diego County had 18 inches of snow most of that last week. This has resulted even in very dry conditions in parts of Southern California, Riverside and Santa Ana, both long-term climate locations were the second driest for the period January through February. Remember, that's on average the wettest period on record. What happened? Well, in December, when we had record snowfall in Tahoe and 14 inches of precipitation in Big Bear and several inches of rain in San Diego and Irvine, the storm track was coming down directly from the north, but it went far south to the subtropics. Tapped into tropical moisture, we had three atmospheric rivers and we had a lot of precipitation and big snows in the mountains. Now, that whole blocking pattern, which is an anomaly, meaning it's departing significantly from the climate pattern that is normal. In other words, this jet stream shouldn't be displaced like this, whether or not it's displaced to the west to the east, north to south, it's an anomaly. The anomaly shifted over us, over California, Pacific Northwest, pushing those storms Far to the north and east, we were on the dry, windy side for the most part. Now, this pattern does favor some of the storms to clip Southern California, and that's what we'll see this week and what we saw in parts of January and February. So, in other words, Southern California gets more precipitation than really anywhere else in California in this type of pattern. It's going to be unstable. Uh, we're looking at significant instability Friday morning across the coast and our inland valleys. So this means the potential for quick bursts of heavy rain, uh, thunder, lightning, and small hail as the storm system number one moves through Friday morning. 
Why are the snow levels so low? Well, we have two pockets of cold air. Remember I said they're coming down from the north following the jet stream over that big blocking pattern in the Pacific. Number one is not as cold as number two. So number two is white shaded. That'll come in Saturday evening and Saturday night. And number one will come in Friday morning. Both of them will lower the snow level significantly. Here's a look at the precipitation distribution for storm number one. This storm should bring the higher precipitation totals and snowfall totals. Even though it's not as cold as storm number two, it does bring precipitation and a path across the Eastern Pacific Ocean. So we'll have a weak atmospheric river and instability over that ocean water will bring precipitation across all of Southern California as shown here. Heaviest in the mountains, but even brief heavy showers in the coast and valleys. This storm is further west than what we saw last week. Now, uh, this jet stream that will be affecting us is strong. So the jet stream west to east, it'll come down from the north and then position itself west to east over Southern California. So that's the area where the main impact of rain, snow, and wind will occur. This is a strong main part of the jet stream moving across our area. So these low pressure systems are not cut off from the jet stream, but they're moving along it. They're literally traveling along it at high speeds. Here's an example and a prediction of what's gonna happen for Friday morning. Low pressure area will come down along the Eastern Pacific, California coast, and then move right across Southern California. Storm number two will be on its heels for Saturday night. So when we go into the weekend, Saturday night, the storm will be right over Southern California as shown here. And by Sunday, it'll be exited to the east. Not completely out of the influence of the storm number two, but most of the precipitation will be tapering off on Sunday. Here's the latest information for storm number one. Widespread precipitation, heaviest in the mountains between one and two inches of water, a lot of that snow, but more importantly, our urban areas widespread, about a half inch to three quarters of rain. So very beneficial rain. It will cause problems with the commute Friday morning and a little bit too much rain at once could cause some urban small stream type of flooding in poor drainage areas. I said mostly snow in the mountains and certainly the case above 5,000 feet. We could be looking at six to 12 inches of snow for elevations above 7,000 feet. And for below that in the mountain communities, between four and eight inches of snow, even a couple inches of snow all the way down to Mount Laguna in San Diego County. Now there will be winds starting as early as Thursday afternoon rolling through Friday, mainly for the desert slopes shaded in yellow here and the mountain passes like corridor I-10 and Interstate 8. All right, let's shift gears to storm number two. We mentioned that it's not as strong in terms of the precipitation potential, but it is colder. So widespread precipitation favoring San Diego County and our mountains inland, a lot like the storm we saw last week and nearly as cold. And because it's nearly as cold, uh, we do expect snow accumulation all the way down to between three and 4,000 feet. So that can affect the Cajon Pass Interstate 15, certainly I-8 in San Diego County. So now we're talking snowfall between one and five inches all the way down to 5,000 feet. And we're talking about additional snowfall in the mountain communities of three to six inches. And that could mean even more than that on top of the foot of snow at the ski resort. So that's storm number two, Saturday afternoon is Saturday. This is what it looks like when we talk about snow Saturday night coming down to the I-8 Pass in San Diego County, coming down to Julian and Warner Springs area, so affecting parts of the 78 and 79, and then potentially some snow getting all the way down to the Cajon Pass up around three to 4,000 feet Saturday night. We'll have to keep an eye on that because that can be an impact uh, even if it's a light snow accumulation. Is the outlook looking wet as well? Well, overall, no. Um, as we go further into March, it looks like the middle part of March will be cooler than average, but the jet stream 
even though it's consolidated west to east, we don't see that big block in the Pacific. It stays further north, affecting Northern California and especially the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies. And those are the areas colder uh, than average expected in mid-March. And those are also the areas with above average precipitation expected. Still a chance for some precipitation in Southern California, but it would be on the weak light side. Here are the highlights. I'll let you look through those. The morning commute on Friday is potentially an impact with some brief heavier showers and widespread rain. Our mountains will see the widespread precipitation adding up to between one and two inches of water and most of that snow. The snow level will come down to about 3,500 feet to 4,000 feet and it'll be even lower when we get into storm number two Saturday night getting down around 3,000 feet with that colder part of the storm Saturday night. Don't forget the wind through the mountain passes. Just a little bit of snow across Interstate 8 and 15 can cause some problems, um, especially during the dark hours and quick bursts of snowfall with showers. Thunderstorms are a real potential, especially storm number one Friday morning, and we could see some small hail. Those falling snow levels, both Saturday night and Friday morning can catch people off guard going through the mountains. So please be aware of the rapidly changing weather conditions from the really warm conditions we've had to full-on winter conditions by early Friday morning. Thanks for tuning in.